catch them in the pasture, run them in a pen, work them on the Sundays, do it all again, raise them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddlebrock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. Right now? It's happening now. It's live. Do it live. That's what we'll do. You're here. Why? I don't know. You did it to yourself, as you always do, which apparently you are a glutton for punishment, so that's why you do it. Uh, stuff's happening today. We got some folks that we are going to talk to from various aspects of life. We got some TV folks. We've got some music folks. We are going to uh, entertain you today or attempt to entertain you because, as everybody knows, the world's been entertained by everything that's been happening. Um, just like, uh, I don't know, we had the guy, Philip Mantle. We talked to him a while back. He's from. England, he studies UFOs, and he studies uh, the supernatural, the phenomenon of the unidentified flying object and the little green man. So we talked to him a while back about things and how the UFO stuff happened. And then recently here in the world that we live in today, that's coming to fruition there. Um, there has been multiple UFOs flying across the United States where we are. And there's been some stuff flying around. Nobody knew what it was. They just saw stuff flying. They're like, is there people in there? Is there stuff happening? Nobody knows. So, what the, what the world is that? So, uh, yeah, there's there's stuff happening around the world. I don't know. I don't know where or what. But are there little green men coming to check us out? I don't know. But uh, if they are, what do you tell them? Do they, do they speak your language? Do you do sign language? Do do they, uh, you know, do they text? Maybe you just hand them a phone. They text you for communication. I don't know, but could it be happening? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just other countries checking us out. Which I don't know. A lot of folks have the idea, which is something I thought of at one point, but I was like, I don't know. I'm not paying that much attention to it because of the internet and social media. And cameras everywhere you turn around, you're being watched. So, the idea of another country just flying some random balloon over to look at you, I'm like, they have the internet over there. They can look at you. They can see you. So, I wasn't worried about that. The only thing I was thinking was, my, my theory, my two cents, I'll only give you one, is maybe it's just a test run. So, like, okay. Let's just run this over and see how long it takes for something to happen to it, just as a test. Because you always do a test run first. You don't send your best thing the first time. You send a test. So possibly it's just a little test run. We'll just fly this little balloon over there, see how far it makes it, and uh, we'll go across Montana, check out where the, the weapons, missile systems are located. I'm like, well, if you're saying that, that's where they're located. They already know where they're located if you just told them. So if they didn't know, they do know now. That's where that. So I was just thinking with my uh, cent and a half is maybe it was just a test to see how far it would go. So if they send another one that they load up with whatever kind of chemical chemicals they want to throw in there, maybe some more Corona, Corona 2.0 or something, they can throw it in there, see how far it goes. So when you shoot it down, whew, now you got it. So that's that's just another possibility. Another possibility is like I heard on the on the news, they're like, man, them dang used car lots, them balloons, them son of a guns go way up in the air. So I heard that theory too, but I don't know. It's probably somewhere in the middle, but that's that's what happened. That's where we live in. People do crazy stuff. Just like this. Just like watching this. This is this is crazy, this is dumb. Why are you even looking at me? Why are you even wasting time looking at me for? Go do something else. Go watch T V or Play a video game. That's what you kids do today. Um, we got stuff happening. Uh, horses. We talked about this before, but it's still happening. The Yellowstone effect is still going down in the horse market. Everybody is watching. You know, we, I was talking about this with the uh, with the horse trainer uh, the other day. Brent Bennett, performing horses over there out of uh, 
Grandview, Texas, was talking about this, and you know, a lot of folks get bent out of shape about Yellowstone, and they complain about the language, and they complain about the plot lines, and and you have to explain to these to these people, I like, guess, it's a TV show. It's not real. These guys are actors. This is not real life. This is not a this is not a live stream action of what's actually happening. It's for entertainment. And what we was talking about was, yeah, there's some stuff that's not 100% accurate. There's not some stuff that's not how it's done. But what it is doing is bringing back the Western lifestyles, bringing back the, the way things are done in the West, bringing back uh, you know cowboys, horses, and things like that. And what it has done is set the horse market on fire. And that helps a lot of folks because, you know, it's – to get a horse, to get a horse on the ground, um, in today's times, you're looking at about, uh, say you got a brood mare, you go breed to a stud, and you, you know, you've got a year before your mare has a colt. You got about six months or so before you wean the colt to sell it. So at that point, you're about anywhere from five to sixty-five hundred dollars in, depending on what you're breeding to. If you're breeding to some bigger stuff, then you, of course, it's going to be more. And so what the Yellowstone effect has done is raised the horse market up where you're able to sell these colts and sell good used broke horses for a decent amount where you're not going and picking up $300 horses or, you know, $1,500 horses. So say rewind five, six, seven years ago, you go buy your $1,500 horse that you bought at that time is now a $4,500 horse. And that's where we're at in the market and it's it's good for everybody all the way around especially right now with fuel as ridiculous as it is hay is nuts so yeah it costs a little bit more to take care of these animals so it does help to uh be able to have the horses and animals pay for themselves and maybe make a little money also um we are going to talk about music and what's going on in the music world who's doing music what's the music I want you to take a gander at this uh, at this tune right here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about it. Call me honey pie Today you called without explaining Called me up to say goodbye Remember once upon a time Was mine was yours and yours was mine We shared a home, a life, a dream Tonight you'll come and get your thing
singing to the cows right there. That's what I'm talking about. I, I do it every day, but not on video. Well, <laughs> you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to hear that anyway. But uh, right here, we've got we've got her right here talking to us. That's Billy Joe, uh, on with us. 2019, you were on Real Country TV uh, that you filmed over there. You got handpicked by Shania Twain, made the top 14. You've been on The Voice, American Idol. Uh, what's that like for you? Uh, I mean, it's amazing. It's it's a it's a really great life that I get to live, and I get to go and and sing and perform every weekend, either full band or acoustic shows. And I've got to do some really cool stuff in my life. Um, ever since I started singing when I was like nine years old, and then later on when I was around eighteen, I got to open for Ray Price, which is still like like one of the. He's just a le- he was a legend, and he's he's my all time favorite. I think that I've opened for, but I've opened for several people. Um, the Oak Ridge Boys, Diamond Rio, Stoney LaRue, Wade Bowen, Roger Crager, Pat Green, um, to name a few of those. There's more, but that's the ones I can think of right now. <laughs> so, you know, you talk about singing singing young and and, uh, and starting singing then. What was it about singing that brought you to singing? And when you did start singing, what were some of the, uh, the artists that you kind of listened to to just kind of, you know, get an idea of like, hey, this is what I want to do? Yeah, so um, my grandparents actually raised me since I was one, um, and they adopted me when I was 15, but I was raised on what I call the oldies but goodies, and I grew up listening to George Jones, Tammy Wynette, Loretta Lynn, Patsy Cline, um, gosh, just just all of those guys and gals, and I I just love good old country music, and that's kind of what I'm trying to bring back right now is uh, that traditional country sound, because um, there's not a whole lot of that. Um, in country music and I kind of I want to bring that back so that's that's been my goal I'm I'm actually working with Dolly Parton's producer right now in Nashville um, on some new stuff and it'll come out in the next few months or so Um, but we've been working hard at that but I I started growing up um, singing in church and the little like local Opry's around town Um, I live in Texas um, so I I grew up on um, like the Gladewater Opry and Wiley Opry and then uh, my dad was still a big part of my life, and he's the one that taught me how to play the guitar. And he was the one that um, I guess was like quote unquote bad influence that <laughs> would take me to the bars and throw me up on stage with what, whatever band was playing and like, hey, here's 20 bucks. We let my daughter sing. And then that's where I learned that I love to perform country music in, you know, bars or venues or wherever. Um, so that I'm, I'm forever grateful that he did that because I, I sure do love it. <laughs> When when you went to uh, when you went to Nashville to, to do that stuff, what was it like for you to be you know being here in Texas and and it's a little slower, a little smaller stuff, and then you go to Nashville and you're like, how was what, what was it like to be there and, and experience all that? Man, it was really cool. Um, I got to be in Nashville for about a month um, filming that TV show. Um, I mean, I'd done like American Idol and The Voice, Mm -hmm. um, but those shows are like totally different than this real country thing. Um, And so we got to be there for a month and um, we did like vocal lessons and like stage performance lessons and uh, wardrobe and makeup and just kind of all kinds of stuff. So they, they really treated you like you were just going out there to perform for people like it was like your just own personal show like it didn't feel like a competition um when we were there so it was a really cool experience to get to be able to be a part of that um and it's something that i'll i'll truly never forget and from that experience that you had what what did you take back with you that you still use today um, I mean, honestly, I, I feel like I really grew um, as an artist from that show. I think it's been, I think it's, what is this, 2023. So it's probably been almost three years now um, since I was on the show. Um, but I, I just feel like I've grown as an artist and I, I kind of felt, I feel like that was when it kind of clicked. Like, this is what I want to do. This is the kind of music that I want to make. Um, and I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to keep singing my traditional country music. Because if you, if you come to a Billy Joe Jones show, you're going to hear, Everything from George Jones to Ray Price to Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynette, Patsy Cline, all the way to like Miranda Lambert, Shania Twain, uh, Patty Loveless, just just everybody. I don't know. I, I try to sing a mixture of stuff, but then you're also going to hear um, some of my songs sprinkled in the mix as well. So I like to do some of my stuff, and then I like to play your favorite covers as well. Where is a place uh, up here in North Texas? You play a lot of places here. What is your favorite spot to play? In like North Texas yes. or just any North Texas area, um, I would probably say, man, that's tough. That's tough to narrow it down. I know one of my favorites is Southern Junction over there in, in Rockwall. 
Um, and that, that place especially, says my, my dad used to um, take me dance in there when I was like 16, <laughs> 17 years old. So I, I grew up in Southern Junction. And then I finally got to make my first stage appearance there last year with my full band. So that was really cool. But I, I love playing Southern Junction. And then I'm really loving playing in the stockyards. I've been playing a lot in the stockyards um, over the past few months. So it's that's a lot of fun. If y'all haven't been in the stockyards, y'all need to come check it out. <laughs> oh, stockyards. Yeah. Stockyard, we hit that a lot. And then, like you say, Southern Junction. Man, I spent so much time in the 90s <laughs> at Southern really? Junction over there. Really? <laughs> It's crazy, but yeah, that's that's a good place because I mean you could go. I I was going there before I could get in on my own, and then after that, you know, just going on my own. But that's that's a, yes. a that's a nice place. A lot of a lot of folks come through there, so that's a heck of a place to uh, to play over there. It's a lot of fun. Now, have you been to the new one? I think they opened one in Irving. So have you Irving? Yep. Have you been I to played that one? there? Uh, um, I think it was. It was pretty close to like when COVID happened, so it was still kind of like coming back from from all of that. So it was a little bit slower, but I know they've picked it up and it, they're having some really great shows out there. So, and I think I actually just talked to them a few weeks ago about getting out there this year. So I'm sure I'll get a date out there again pretty soon. Okay, what dates for the folks that are wondering where you're going to be? What dates do you have coming up? And if they're looking for your dates, where is the best place to go? Best place to go, um, I post all of my events on Facebook, but I also have um, a website. It's Billy Joe Music, B-I-L-L-I-E-J-O, BillyJoeMusic.com, um, and I post all of my events on there. Um, I think I have, uh, let's see, Saturday, I'm actually playing with uh, the Brent Alexander Band, opening for his band over at Magnolia Motor Lounge in Fort Worth on Saturday. So I'll be there on Saturday. Um, and then I think next week... What what are the dates? Um, I'm trying to think. I'm blank right now. Uh, I know next Saturday I'm in Rockwall at Sideways, I believe. I think, isn't that like the 25th or something? Uh, February 25th? I believe that's next Saturday. Yeah, some, some like um, I don't know. I don't even know what date is most of the time. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure. I know I'm in Rockwall, but I know I'm somewhere else on next Friday. But I can't, um, I can't remember right now for some reason where i'm at oh wait i'm in texarkana okay um on friday yeah i'll be at redbone in texarkana on friday okay and when you're yeah. when you're on the road everybody always everybody always wants to know this when you're on the road you're headed somewhere no matter how far no matter how far away it is what's that road snack you throwing with you on the road what do you eat what are you eating <laughs> on? oh this is bad okay so now we're getting into this okay um, well, honestly, I've gotten to where I've, I've been drinking Coke Zeros because I've been trying to, like, cut out, like, Coke and all that kind of stuff. But um, I love to snack on um, Jolly Ranchers, like, while I'm driving, just to give me something to do. Because if it's a long trip, I get really bored. So, mm -hmm. like, and I don't want to just sit there and eat a bunch of junk food. I try not to. So I, like, sit there and snack on Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So what about this? When you're, when you're back at the house and you're and, and you relaxing, uh, taking it easy, you got the grill fired up outside. You get ready to cook something. What are you throwing on it? Ooh, well, actually, right now my husband is out there. We used to own a crawfish business, and um, he is cooking some boiled shrimp right now. So we're gonna make some some Cajun shrimp pasta tonight. But um, if we're cooking on the grill, it's definitely gonna be a fillet. I love I love my fillet steaks. That's that's kind of my all time favorite. <laughs> what are you pairing with that steak? What are you pairing with it? What are you gonna have with it? Um, I love asparagus, and then I love squash and. Um, like zucchini i guess like squash and zucchini like on the we put it in like foil like on the mm -hmm. grill and let it sit there and cook like that it's really good <laughs> that's how i cook my shrimp i put it in the foil <laughs> ball it up and i just stick yes. it on there and yes <laughs> and a little bit of butter and let it work itself out yes that's perfect okay so i guess we'll let you get back to it i imagine your food's just about getting ready for you so uh yes. you said billy joe is the site to find mm -hmm. you see yes, where you're gonna sir. be you're playing in texas yes, you're playing sir. everywhere they'll find you there Yes, sir. All thank right. you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you down the road. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So check it out. Go to the website, billyjoemusic.com. See where she is going to be and check out some of those tunes. Man, it's good stuff. Some good stuff. Southern Junction. I can't say this on the internet, on the TV, where everyone will see me, but back, back in the 90s, we used to go to Southern Junction all the time. I'd only got kicked out of there one time, but it wasn't my fault. Um, so, I did, okay, I'll tell you the story. You want to know the story why I kicked out of Southern Junction? Okay. 
Yeah, one of the stories. Okay, so this is back when, when I was still rodeo and I was fighting bulls for a guy that lived out in Kaufman. Everybody's going everybody's gonna to automatically know who that is. But anyway, so I was fighting bulls for the guy. Uh, and that night, we decided to go out. Uh, to go. We were going going to go out. So we went to Fast Daddy's in Terrell, the pool hall in Terrell, Texas, Fast Daddy's. We went over there to play pool. We're going there to play pool, but he forgot his ID. And he didn't have his ID with him. So we're getting some, ordering some beer. We're going to get some beer. And he didn't have his ID, so they gave him a hard time, but I have an ID. So he throws a fit in this place. Gets us kicked out of Fast Daddy's. So we get kicked out of there. We go down the road to the beer store. He picks up some beer there, and he's drinking Heineken, which was terrible. I don't drink that crap. It's nasty. He's drinking it. So he's like, what are we going to do? Ah, oh, let's go to Southern Junction. So we go to Southern Junction, start playing pool over there. He gets into an argument with somebody else, and bam, phew, we're out again. Two places, one night. So anyway, fast forward years later, back at Southern Junction, out there one night, and I met some some woman out there back in the 90s. And then uh, fast forward today, it's still my dang wife. So that's weird. But that's what happened at Southern Junction. So... It happened. That was back in the 90s, late 90s, almost 2000s, I guess. But, yeah, that's the story. Southern Junction is a good place to go. Like she was talking about the one in Rockwall, it's it's 18 and up to get in, but you can also take your kids as long as you have an adult with you. You can take your kids with you, and they can go in. But the kids got to be out by, like, 10 o'clock. But it's a restaurant, too, and you can cook your own steaks on this huge grill thing, or you can have it cooked for you. And it's pretty good. Matter of fact, three or four years ago, it was during, back when Tex was on the show. Because Tex, Tex's birthday and mine are in the same month. So they had a Pepper Stewart birthday extravaganza out there uh, one night where people could go out there and tell them they were there for the show and get in for free. And we had a big deal that time, but that's been years ago. I'm not much on that kind of stuff. It was it was fun. Anyway, Southern Junction, Rockwall, look them up. They got one Irving also. Also, now I think after that, it's time for you to do a little advertising. They don't let them pay, pay for your advertising. So, good stuff. Check it out. Southern Junction, Rockwall, Texas. She's gonna be playing out there again. She'll be in Irving again. So, oh, that's pretty good. She got some pretty good stuff. She got pretty good tunes. I checked them out on the uh, on the uh, YouTube's today to see what's going on. It's pretty good stuff. Um, we did. We do have somebody possibly coming in studio today. I don't know. It's fun with live shows. Um, I guess we can run through some stuff. Uh, there's a movie coming out called Corsicana. There is a movie that is out coming out called Corsicana. Uh, right now in the Yellowstone, 1883, atmosphere of Westerns. Everybody's trying to do a Western. A Western. Everybody wants to do it. And Westerns are the big rage. The quality of Westerns coming out, there's a huge scale of good quality, like 1883 Yellowstone. And then there's other ones like, I think I filmed this in the backyard. There's a big difference in that. So anyway, check out this trailer for Corsicana. See if it's something you're going to watch. And uh, we'll come back and talk about some more stuff. What do you want? Now, that ain't no way to greet visitors. Just keep on riding. I don't think so, ma'am. We're going to stay for a while. Darling, this gang will hire, terrorize, and kill anybody that get in their way. I assume you're a lawman? Federal marshal. You leaving again now? Wherever this dollar ball goes, he leaves trail of bodies behind. Men, women, children. They rode it around noon, started to shoot. If I don't stop him, I will have blood on my hand. I found this on the boy. He's been putting them on the victims ever since he killed your wife from your son. I'm gonna need you on my posse to stop him. You know I'm ready to ride. Big California. Oh, sharpshooter. Do you understand what 
it feels like to not know if you're hurt, dead, or alive. Why did you become a preacher, man? To repent. I'm a killer. We all kill us, Sam. And some men just need killing. A simple flank and shoot maneuver. You hit them from front. As soon as they get through Eagle Pass, get the job done. Get the Hell Brothers land. Get back. <laughs> you feel that? He's coming. Can I kill him now? Who are you? Bass Reeves. the last gladiator sword. If you get on an animal that can kill you without even trying, it's like trying to control an explosion. These guys have families, wives and kids. It's not a matter of death, it's a matter of when they're gonna get hurt. Check it out. That is a new show on Prime. Prime Video right there. PBR stuff. So check it out. Watch it when it comes out. I feel like I just ran a mile. <laughs> I feel like I just ran a mile. That's a long way. Um, what else do we have? We've got a couple more Zoom calls possibly jumping in here. Maybe not. I don't know. I may have to check my uh, internet mail, my electronic mail, and see about that. Oh, I watched, before I get into more random stuff let's do some uh what are you watching or not on the internet uh you the show you you never seen that about the guy that kills people okay he gets he he gets obsessed with these girls to the point where he has to kill them well last year he ran across a girl that likes to kill as well and they yeah it's like a knockoff Dexter well the guy that plays the main killer in you uh, because the reason I'm bringing this up is the new the new season uh, came out I guess a week or so ago and it's in t it's split in half it's the season split in half and uh, so I watched the first I don't know four episodes whatever whatever the first half of the episodes are and so I watched those, and a news story came out that he, the guy who plays the killer, is upset with Netflix because he claims that Netflix is glorifying Jeffrey Dahmer with the Dahmer show. So the guy that plays a killer is upset with the fact that that there's other killer shows on Netflix, which the Dahmer show happens to be real. So, I mean, come on, guys. Just go do your TV stuff. Huh? Oh. Uh, well, it's 2023. I mean, they can have both. Just ask Tex. He'll tell you. I was like, okay. It's 2023. That's fine. That's fine with me. That's what happens. So... Uh, yeah, so speaking of, you know, the split series, split seasons, just like uh, all the shows do now, uh, Yellowstone has done it with season five. If you paid attention, you might or may not have caught me in the first uh, part of the Yellowstone season on uh, a couple of things. But then also there's another guy that you did catch on Yellowstone uh, this season. I think he's also working, worked on 1923 and... Uh, that guy's Jeremy Richardson. He's talking to us. There he is. Look at him. Hey guys, how's it going? What is going on, man? So, uh, where where you are? Are you in Montana, right? Yes, sir. I live uh, in Three Forks, Montana, up here uh, in the Gallatin Valley. I live and work on a ranch as well. Okay. So, so let's uh, get we're into in the middle of cabin season. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I had uh, uh, I guess two weeks ago. I'll just say the coyotes uh, ate good. Good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get, I get what you mean there. there. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's get, let's get into this. Uh, 
before we jump into what you're doing now, uh, tell us a little bit about, about, you see, work on a ranch, about your upbringing, what you did. You, did you grow up on a ranch? You did a little bit of rodeoing or, or how'd that go? Yeah, I, I'm originally from Minnesota. Grew up uh, in a small farm town. Uh, Grandpa had a farm. We had dairy cattle and we were able to uh, have field crops as well. So I I had a little bit of a upbringing around agriculture uh, in the Midwest there in Minnesota. And I went through college and stuff, kind of didn't really know what I was going to do kind of like as a career. And mm -hmm. I ended up looking uh, into working on ranches out West uh, with a little background in farming and kind of just picking up and moving kind of seemed the best way uh, in 2021. Uh -huh. So uh, as you can see here, I recently have a horse uh, I bought. Her name's Harley. She's a 2014. She's yeah. Uh, Sorrel paint registered mm -hmm. and so uh, I use her here on the ranch and uh, we do a lot of different uh, activities uh, we do some roping uh, some jackpot rodeos and uh, northern rodeo association as well uh, so I didn't grow up riding uh, horseback or in rodeos um, when I moved out here I kind of put myself out there to learn and and to do what I do and uh, as you can see there I'm on a bull last summer in the Northern Rodeo Association. That's over there in Darby, Montana, actually the same spot where they film Yellowstone. Okay. Uh, we, it was, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of the cast and producers come out and watch that rodeo. All right. So, yeah. So, and that's uh, from episode seven of season, season five. Yeah. So how'd that, that, so how'd that come about? You, you, you're working up there and, uh, you, you did a little yeah. bit of rodeo stuff and then, uh, what happened to the point where you're like, you know what, I'm going to go uh, check out this Yellowstone deal and see what happens? Yeah, I mean, they were filming 1883 up here. Uh, I was working on a ranch that they are actually using the land. Uh, a lot of the mountain scenes were filmed uh, in up north of Livingston, Montana. So I was had been working on a ranch, and I ended up looking uh, and talking with a casting director, uh, mm -hmm. and I kind of exchanged some information, and they – told me to apply. They were hiring for more Cowboys, casting for more Cowboys this season five. And yeah. so I thought, you know, what the heck, I might as well. They asked if I could ride and rope. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I, <laughs> I do that really. <laughs> so that's kind of how I got into it. And then I was first on set last May uh, filming that first episode. So, okay. And yeah. so, and so how's, how's that uh, for you? Just, you know, kind of doing that and then, and then being around those guys and, and out there on set and then seeing, how that stuff goes because it's it's there's a lot of hurry up and wait and then it goes pretty yeah. fast and then you're just like man what happened to those 15 hours where where'd it go yeah uh i would say it's a <laughs> surreal moment for me uh humbling for sure because i got to be on set and work with you know the legendary kevin costner and cole hauser and everything as you can see here you got jen landon who plays teeter ryan bingham Jake uh, and Ian Bowen uh, and Cole Hauser right there. And, you know, being going up on set and seeing the ranch and seeing the Y on the barn, uh, it kind of hit me uh, in the moment. I was like, wow, I'm here. Let's do this. I was excited, nervous. Uh, that was honestly because of this opportunity. That was my first time ever on TV uh, doing a production. And it happened to be Yellowstone, the biggest production out right now in the last four or five years. So it's a, uh, it was really cool. I mean, everyone was friendly, welcoming, uh, fun, uh, got to hear different stories from all different seasons from all the actors. So it was a great experience to be honest. So moving forward, what are your thoughts or what are you going to do? Are you going to keep, you going to pursue this and just kind of see where it goes or, or what are you going to do? Yeah, I, I was able to hire a manager and uh, get into some talent managements uh, and see where I can do. I'm mostly getting into more stunt work than more acting mm -hmm. because I do rodeo and I do horseback riding and being able, a lot of people on, on horseback in different movies and TV shows are considered in the stunt department. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be working more on the stunt side of things than acting, but I do definitely, uh, whether it is Western horsemanship uh, or any type of other stunts, I kind of want to break into that industry in the TV and movie world moving forward. Uh, in 2023 here so and being able to uh be 1923 uh recently too that was more of a background spot but 
still being able to meet Harrison Ford and Helen Marin and be able to have that experience was yeah. awesome. Okay. And and as far as doing that and jumping into that, that kind of stuff, are you going to, you going to kind of stay up there in Montana where you're at? You're looking to, to move around or, or what are your thoughts on that? I believe I'm staying put right here. Um, I don't see myself moving back to Minnesota or moving anywhere else. I love it. Uh, and the way it seems, it seems like that industry, I, I'm able to travel. So if I need to be somewhere for a TV or movie show doing some stunts, I would just fly out and travel and, and but have home right here in Montana on the ranch I'm on. So I uh, definitely staying put. I love it up here. All right. So other, other than working on the, on the Yellowstone stuff, uh, do you have anything else coming up or anything you're, you're working on that, uh, you're going to branch out on? Uh, not necessarily anything, uh, with the TV and stuff. We are planning on, uh, I'm waiting on the call from the casting director to come back on set once production begins for the second half of season five. Uh, as far as I knew, it was March, uh, April timeframe, uh, to pick up filming again for season five mm -hmm. and, uh, season two of 1923 will pick up uh, in the area I'm in as well uh, later this year. So okay. I will be back on set for both of those shows uh, later this year. But for now, I'm uh, just busy working on the ranch here in Montana. And I got a couple of rodeos coming up in March and April that I'll be uh, going to as well. They're just amateur rodeos. I do not have a pro card. I'm not, <laughs> I, I would love to, I would love to hit up Fort Worth, Dallas area, get in some open rodeos and maybe travel down to Houston. But yeah, uh, right now I'm, I'm sticking put in Montana. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll work. Uh, before we get out of yeah. here, before we get out of here, uh, you're talking about rodeo and, and going down the road. So when you do go down the road, What's your uh, go-to road snack you're hauling with you? Oh, you know, I always got a sweet tooth. So if it's if it's not an actual meal, uh, like a sub sandwich or anything, it's it's probably uh, Reese's Pieces or Reese's Buttercups, uh, <laughs> just a snack on have a sweet tooth. So, All right. uh, I mean, that's my go-to little road trip treat. All right. Now, when you're back at the ranch, hanging out up there, you're sitting out, Sitting out back with the grill, you got it fired up, and uh, you get ready to throw something on the grill. What are you putting on it? One of those big black Angus steaks that we get from <laughs> right here on the ranch that we grill. I love my steak, and you know maybe some potatoes with it and yeah. some sweet corn. So all right, yeah. all right, well, Jeremy, man, we appreciate you visiting with us and telling us a bit about what's going on with you and what you got in the works. And uh, good luck to you, man. And we'll catch you. Uh, Probably here a little bit on uh, the rest of season five. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Have you. Have a good one. All right. Jeremy Richardson. He uh, stumbled into a spot on Yellowstone. He is having a good time with that. I saw the other day, he, yeah, he was doing a boot barn. He was at boot barn doing a, a signing at the boot barn. So he's, in, he's living it up. He's enjoying it. So more power to him. And uh, what else we got going on? We still have no one else that wandered in here. I thought I heard the door. That was trash. The trash man? Trash man, hey, come here. Let me ask you something. Actually, it was an alien. Probably was. Dang aliens, man. That's something like that. What the world? Those suckers are everywhere. Um, so we may not have that one. Probably if I check my email like a normal person, I'll probably see where they said, you know what? I ain't going to Dallas. Traffic's terrible. Go <laughs> yeah, I go Saturday. Um, all right, so what else we got? We did the ride. You did the ride video. We talked about the ride, PBR stuff. Check that out. You know, Forrest Smith, Forrest Smith of Yellowstone, we've had on here a bunch of times. Uh, he is in a movie, another movie called, I think it's called The Ride. Maybe the same one, I don't know. But it's about a bull, uh, it's, he plays an old uh, retired bull rider some bull ride maybe he's working on so that's something else he's doing i guess i could i guess i should have called him and asked him i'm gonna call him then he'll tell you i'll wait around what are you gonna tell you like you did last time i was i sit here all day cleared off half my schedule waiting on you to call me <laughs> oh he was such man we was over there at the yellowstone deal uh december that we were we were rolling we had so much so much fun happening over there he was having a good old time 
Uh, what else we got? Why does it say snakes in your butt? Who wrote this? Oh, here it is. Reptile Wrangler. A reptile Wrangler. That's what we'll call William. Oh, Tex will be a reptile Wrangler. Uh, it was an accident, though. Uh, reptile Wrangler removes a snake from the toilet in an Australian home. Snake catcher in Queensland responded to a home with help of, for an unusual situation. A four-foot snake in the toilet. Uh, the snake catcher said his uh, his wife, a fellow snake catcher, responded to his home where they found a snake in the bowl of their toilet. Um, it says uh, when they lifted the toilet the toilet seat, they were uh, quite surprised. Look, wait, go back to that picture again. I want to see something. That's Australia. How much toilet paper do they use? Look, there's like four there's like four empty rolls in the trash. What are they eating? What are you What are you eating over there? I mean, you're going to some toilet paper, big time. I, there's There's four rolls I see on top. There's probably what four or eight more under that sucker. Good God, people! Now, one of those snakes was there. He's like, "What are y'all? What are they eating?" He wanted to find out. He's like, "Man, there's good food happening in here. Let's go see." God. So they went to use the bathroom. They found a toilet. They found a toilet snake. Uh, they posted a video. I didn't want to. I didn't want to worry you with the video. We don't want to see that. Um, so they removed the. Uh, it was a common tree snake from the toilet. Common tree snake. But those are the snakes that hurt people. People don't realize that more people get hurt and injured by non-poisonous snakes than they do poisonous snakes because you run over stuff and away from it. But that brings me to the story of the barn snake I had one time. Not on purpose. But we had a toilet. It was a small little toilet restroom in the barn. And I was feeding hay or feeding. And I'd walk by the barn toilet, and there was water on the floor. And I was like, why is there water on the floor right there by the toilet? What is that? So I went on through some hay out when I was done. I come back, and I saw it, and I was like, that's weird. Maybe there's a leak in the toilet. So I reached down. I grabbed the lid and I opened it, and there is a cotton mouth looking right at me. So I dropped the lid, turned around, and it broke my foot and everything else trying to get out of the bathroom. So I run out of the bathroom. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I hate to shoot my toilet and blow it up. So the kid that was over there, he was probably, that was helping me feed, uh, he used to come around all the time and help with horses. He wanted to learn about horses and stuff. He's all about horses. But he's also one of them uh, big-time redneck boys with the mullets and the cut-off T-shirts and wearing mud boots and four-wheelers all the time, doing donuts and wheelies. He's one of those kids. He was young. He was probably 15 years old. So I run in the house trying to find something to get with, do with this snake. I didn't know what to do. I didn't figure something out. I get back to the barn. This kid is standing there holding the snake. Like, what do you want me to do with it? <laughs> yes. And I'm like, uh, get rid of it. Get it out of here. I don't want it over here. Haul that sucker off. So he uh, humanely disposed of this snake. So, But, yeah, tell you what. Opening a toilet lid and seeing a snake, I, I do not go anywhere where there's a toilet involved. I don't check it. Anytime you go to a toilet, I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you a little word of advice here for you toilet people that use toilets, which is most of you, unless you're going outside. Before you use a toilet anywhere, even your own house, open the lid, open the bottom, because sometimes spiders are up under there, and then flush that sucker before you sit down on it. Because if there's a snake in your toilet just sitting back there hanging out, and then you sit down and it decides to just wander on up in there? Yeah, no, you pre-flush that sucker first. That serves two purposes. Once, it gets rid of whatever's hiding up there sneaking up on you. Two, it sends some fluid down your pipes, so whatever you put in there is going to flow away easier. So, yeah, be careful with toilets. Oh, speaking of poop and toilets, I got more poop for you. This is California poop, though. 
Oh, speaking of California poop, let's talk about Teslas. We did. We talked about Teslas, electric cars a while back. Everybody got upset with me, but I tried to explain to them, look, I don't care if you want an electric car. If you want an electric car, get an electric car, get an electric truck. I don't care because if it's feasible for you and it serves your purpose, that's fine. If you're just going to get groceries 10 minutes up the road and whatever, that's fine if an electric vehicle works for you. But some of us, like myself, is not going to work for me. I drive two, three, four hours a day, every day. I'm not going to go drive an hour and a half, plug in my truck for three hours and charge it and then go somewhere else. I can't, I can't do that. For me, it's not feasible. For some of you folks, it's fine. So I'm not hating on people that drive electric vehicles. I don't care if you want to drive it. Drive whatever you want. I don't care. Not my problem. But what happened in California is someone else's problem. Uh, police in California wrangled a loose bovine I'm, this is a story from california written by california so this is how it sounds police in california wrangle a loose bovine that managed to shatter the windshield and leave an unsavory mess in a collision with a tesla all right the pleasant police department said it on facebook post because you post everything on facebook that the officer responded late wednesday night about a loose cow warning in the traffic and the officers arrived to find the brown cow running in the area and determined the animal had been in the collision with a sedan that shattered the vehicle's windshield and left its hood covered in what appears to be feces. <laughs> they wrote this, not me. Uh, the cow was not injured. Well, of course not. It's a Tesla. Uh, it was returned safely to its owner with the help of a local rancher. So even though Californian people hate cows and cowboy stuff, there still are some cowboys and cowboy stuff going on in California, even if it's an electric car and a cow. But, yeah, this said unsavory. I, I don't know about you, but to me it smells like money. Um, speaking of smell like money, Champion steer sells for four hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars. Steer raised by a fifteen-year-old girl earned top marks at the Fort Worth Stock Show Rodeo before selling for a record four hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars. Sadie, a freshman at Wild Wildoro or Wild Row, Wild Row High School, and a member of the Randall County 4-H, entered the steer she calls Snoop Dogg into the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo, where he was named the grand champion out of 1,500, or over 1,500 competitors. Uh, she said, it felt like time stopped. I was in complete disbelief, and I was shocked. It just all seemed like a blur. Well, his name is Snoop Dogg, so if you had any Snoop Dogg action going on, that's probably why it was all a blur. Uh, Snoop Dogg, a heavyweight European cross that broke, then broke the record for the show when he sold for 440000 uh, to Fort Worth-based Higginbottom Insurance. The price beat the record for last year. That was $310,000. Uh, it was a new record for Fort Worth, but it's not the highest record ever paid for a steer because the grand champion steer from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo last year sold for $1 million. It's all a tax write-off, though. People, it's just a tax write. Most it's just companies, companies buying these steers as a tax write-off, and it's like that. That's a write-off because you got to pay that taxes anyway. People don't realize that's what happens when you have a, when you have a company, and at the end of the year you have a certain amount of money that if you get if you hold over for the year you're gonna get taxed on it, or you've got to spend that money before the end of the year so you, because you're gonna have to pay it in taxes anyway. So you spend it off, make your taxes lower. No, it's Google it. Ask Bernie Madoff. I watched that yesterday, last night. I watched all three episodes of Madoff, the Bernie Madoff story, and that guy was a genius. An illegal genius, but he was a genius. But he's in prison. Um, but no, what he was he was doing the ultimate Ponzi scheme, and there were so many times that he could have got caught or should have gotten caught, but he was so big in the Wall Street uh he was on the council, some stuff, council the Wall Street, this, that, and the other. And he's such a big name that every time any allegations come up, people are like, oh, no, that's Bernie. He knows what he's doing. We don't have to look at that stuff. He even got to the point where he got investigated by one of the 
association deals, whatever for the money people. And he didn't even have an, he didn't even have, I guess it's like a seller's license or a, a investor license, whatever it is you got to have to invest. He didn't even have that because he was just taking people's money and putting it in the bank. And then given when somebody wanted their money out, he just take the money and give it to them. So he just kept getting all this money in and then making all these fake return sheets they were printing off on the old style printers and giving to people. And uh, so they get to go to the investigation. People ask questions and what else going on. They go in there and say, like, oh, hey, what's your account number for your blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he just rattles off these numbers. They didn't even look it up. If they would have punched it in the computer, the numbers, they would have said, this is not even a real account. He's been having an account. And they would have caught him right there, but they didn't. It went on for more years after that. So, I mean, it was it was crazy. But, I mean, he was he was raking in the money. I mean, he had people giving money to him. I think I, think I heard something about Kevin Bacon uh, give him $50 million to invest. That's now gone. Yeah, he was, he was, when, when it come down to it and he ended up getting busted and all that stuff, he was like billions. He had billions and billions of dollars of people's money that he just kind of squandered away. But yeah, it's pretty, it's on uh, Netflix. Check it out. Madoff. Um, somebody else that, that almost made off out of the snow, but didn't. And that's this cow. There is a cow in Utah. Cow stuck in deep snow gets boost from Utah firefighters. Uh, the firefighters in Utah came to the rescue of a cow that wandered into a creek bed and became stuck in the deep snow. The deep snow. That reminds me of that movie, uh, other movie I watched, uh, The Offer, where they're talking about the making of The Godfather. They had some deep snow on that one, too. Uh, the South Summit Fire District said on a Facebook post, because everybody Facebook post. The crew responded to a creek on a report of a bovine in distress. Bovine is also a cow, if you're wondering. Uh, it seems that Beth, Betsy, I don't think that's her real name, uh, stayed out here a little too late last night and couldn't quite get out of the creek bed on her own. Uh, they shared the photos of firefighters helping her climb out of the deep snow, uh, which nearly reached the cow's neck. So she was a deep up in there. Uh, the firefighters were able to give her a boost to the embankment, and she was free. She was freed. So that's that's always a good deal because you don't want to get stuck in there. You don't want to be knee deep or neck deep in snow because if you end up across the pond, then you're going to be neck deep in water, and that's what happened in Britain. Firefighters to the rescue again in England. Uh, they borrowed a piece of heavy machinery, which is like a big forklift, from a farmer to rescue a horse that became stuck in the waterway. Uh, Lincolnshire Fire and Rescue said in a Twitter post, which once more onto the internet you post this stuff, uh, the crews from Spalding, uh, Donington, and Boston responded when a horse became stuck neck deep in the water, in the water puddle hole near Spalding. Uh, the firefighters used a specialized animal rescue equipment and a forklift from a nearby farmer to hoist, hoist the horse to safety. The horse is safe. Uh, they got the horse out. Good deal. No snakes on a plane, snakes in a bowl. We got horses stuck in water. We got cows stuck in snow. We did Corsican already. Uh, we did the cow that sold for a lot of money. We talked to some people. We've done a lot of stuff today. What time is it? We've been busy. Good God, we're busy. And there ain't nobody else in here. All these people are like, oh, I want to be blah, 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 blah. Nobody wants to come in here. That's how dumb this show is. I tell people, this show is so dumb. I don't even know why I come here, but I you know, I end up showing up half the time. And it's like, why? But I'm here. Um, so apparently our studio guests maybe didn't find the studio. Maybe it's maybe it traffic. It's Dallas. So that happens. Um that does that does happen. I'm trying to think what else I watched, what else I did. What else has happened since I was here last? Uh, we got some cow vents coming up. I know that. The day work challenge. I'm going to be riding in that thing on Saturday over in uh, Roy City, Texas. I'm, I got a double hitter. I got a double header. A double header Saturday. Uh, Saturday morning going to the day work challenge in Roy City. 
and then from that leaving to go to Greenville to the East Texas Stock Horse Association event that night. So it's going to be a double header. And then, and then, no, and then, no, and then, and then Sunday, their company that I work for with these, uh, we're doing a shoot, a special shoot on Sunday. Uh, that you guys will see throughout the next few months on the interweb net that we're going to be doing Sunday. That's going to be uh, entertaining, so we're going to be working on that stuff. Uh, you can always go to the website. You can always go to preparetour.com. There's a lot of stuff on there to see. You can find old shows. You can see things. You can look around. Um, depending on where you're watching this right now, if you're on DBTV, then you're already there. But if you're watching on something else, uh, DBTV is a Roku channel that we are on. We've been on now for a while. It's a newer, newer network. It's been around about a year or so. Uh, they finally brought us on recently, I don't know, a couple months ago, whatever. And we air on Saturdays at noon or 1 o'clock. I don't know. I don't, time zones mess me up. It's 2 o'clock Pacific, so I guess it's 1 o'clock Central. So we're on there at 1 o'clock Central. And then if you're on the live, because you go to that channel... They have uh, some on-demand shows that they on-demand cooking shows or something else like that on there. But if you're looking for us, we are live in your face, and that's at one o'clock on Saturdays. And then if you're a night owl and you're up in the middle of the night for no reason, we also replay it like midnight or like at midnight or one o'clock in the morning on uh, Tuesday, Monday night or Tuesday night or something like that. I don't know. But it's on there. It runs twice. We're on there twice a week. Check it out. Uh, you'll see these shows, newer shows, older shows, lots of shows is on there. So you can check it out there on the DBTV. Um, pretty soon they will be, uh, I'm waiting to hear the finals on the deal, but uh, the DBTV will be coming to local cable networks uh, in a lot of major cities, Dallas, uh, New York. There'll be some in California. There'll be some in Houston, I think, Oklahoma. All, all the major cities, they will be on the local cable channel. So you'll be able to watch this mess there. I don't know why you would, but you're doing it right now. So you probably would. If you're doing it now, then you probably would watch it there. I don't know. If you do, go tell me about it. What it looks like. See what it looks like, because I don't know. Oh, the Cattle Raiders Expo is coming up in March. Uh, we're supposed to have those folks coming in here, but we're just having lots of scheduling conflicts with those folks because they're on the road a lot promoting uh, the Cattle Association events and the convention. Uh, if you have anything to do with cows, you want to go to that convention, you can get – there's a lot of uh, trainings and clinics and stuff they do throughout those couple of days that uh, I think it's like for 10 bucks you can just go walk around the exhibits and see what's going on. And then from – Past that, you can buy different packages for different clinics, different speakers, different things going on. Uh, I don't know. I'll be out there one of those days, uh, wandering around looking at stuff and seeing what's going on. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. If you're in, if you're into cows, you like cow stuff, just go and check it out. Uh, a lot of those booths give stuff away. I mean, you can walk away with some nice stuff. I mean, it, all the all the flags that I have and sorting sticks and all that stuff. I haven't bought none of those. I get them over there because they hand them out. Or they'll have a little, uh, I was going to say a, a text game. They have a little cornhole game over there where you can throw, you know, stuff into the cornhole, which, that's weird. But anyway, they got that stuff going on. You could do that. Um, I guess it's time for me to leave. I've been here long enough, I think. Um, so with that, I'm going to get out of here. Go find something to do. Watch out for aliens. Don't get probed. If you do, make sure you film it because if you don't, no one's gonna believe you. So, God, I got, I gotta get out of here now. This thing's after me.